This right here is the ultimate bike according to the internet. But is the internet right? I want to give a special shout out to my friends over at Jensen USA. They made this video possible. Thank you, Jensen. I have a link to every single part on this bike in the YouTube description below. So I'll take you over to Jensen. Anything you purchase there will help support my channel. Furthermore, I am supported by PNW Components, Industry 9, Shimano. Oh, and the frame. You guys are familiar with this frame. I did buy it myself. I didn't pay full retail pop. I got a slight discount, but this is a great bike. I'm excited to be sharing it with all of you again. So here we go. The ultimate internet bike. Let's go through it real quick, figure out what makes it so special. And then before we're done, we're gonna take it out to the trails and have a good time seeing how she does. So at the heart of this beauty is the Chrome Egg Stylus frame. I'm riding a size medium. I'm five foot eight, so this frame's a touch small. But I kind of like that because this is not a bike I want to be monster trucking. I kind of want to have to ride it more aggressively and actively because it's a hardtail. I bought this frame last year in like March or April or something, put a truss fork on it, single speed, then went to gears, and then eventually tried out a Marzocchi fork. But there is a big difference between this fork and the one that you saw on here previously. That fork was an air fork, 170 travel. This fork is a coil fork at 150 travel. You have seen this fork before over on my evil offering first look bike build ride review video. I'll link to that up here. So here it comes again. And if you're really paying attention, there's one more cool detail. That missing detail is that the front wheel grew a little bit. That's right, I finally caved in and I'm trying the mullet setup for realsies. I did try the mullet setup on my Mojo HD5, burning a trust message fork up front. Out back, we've got the 27.5 wheel. These are Industry 9 Backcountry 360 wheels, so it's a 36 millimeter rim width, which is pretty darn wide. I thought I was gonna run the 2.6 tires on here, but I wanted to make the bike ride a tad different than it did previously. I enjoyed it in the last iteration, but I wanted something a little bit faster and lighter, so I'm skipping Cushcore. I'm going down from 2.6 and back, 2.8 in front. I'm going down to a 2.5 up front and a 2.3 in back. I'm running my PNW Components cockpit. At some point, I'll probably swap this stem out for a longer one. It's a little 40 mil unit. I like the 45s and the 50s, usually a tad more, but I'm gonna try this before I do any changing. I need to put an end cap on my cable. I think it's gonna be fun. Let's go out to someplace really special and give it a proper shakedown in the woods. Let's go. Today was the first ride. It was, it was a pretty good sized ride. I was really enjoying a lot of the aspects of the previous incarnation of the Chrome Egg. It had enough travel to be pretty plush. It could get through a lot of really technical sections with all the traction on those big tires, but I wanted something a little bit more efficient. Would these changes that the internet told me were so helpful, would they make this bike what I thought it could be? Well, I don't know. The way I had it up, set up before, it was super plush for a hardtail but it had a 2.6 tire in back, super wide and square with a big old cush core. And then with all that 170 travel up front and then a 2.8 front tire, it was pretty soft. Oh. On trails like this Sketchy. one here, the previous incarnation of the Chrome Egg would definitely work, but it would not be fast. It would not be efficient. My goal here is that this internet mullet setup would be a little bit easier to ride. But pretty quickly, I first found a little bit of an issue and it wasn't even the bike's fault at all. Note to self, new grips with more rubber left and different gloves. Like I have no problems with this. And then all of a sudden this bike has just been like killing my hands. Now that it's been a week or two since filming this video, I've ridden the bike a little bit more and I can conclusively say my hand numb issue was due to the gloves. I wanted to try these gloves because they have a nice big D3O knuckle pad but the palm doesn't really have any extra padding and I think that resulted in a lot of my hand numbness issues that day. The bike definitely feels lighter on the trail, so it's pretty easy to pick up over things when you need to. I didn't actually weigh it, but it rides significantly lighter than the last iteration, which makes sense. Smaller tires, no cush core. Less fork travel, so it's easier to pull the front end off the ground. 
that's that's all pretty nice so I'm not sure what I'm gonna tweak, but I might try a grippier back tire, maybe going back to a 2.6 with a Cush Core. And, you know, I might that might be a good balance to that 29 inch front, because, you know, bigger rear, smaller front, that's how the e-bikes were, and they worked pretty well. They did have engines, motors. It's just different. Anyhow, I'm optimistic. We'll get this thing dialed in. I should probably figure out where I wanna ride it. I'm wondering if I gotta get this thing like, if it's the kind of bike that's going to work really well in one place and then be very specific and then not so good in the other places. Whereas when you have a full suspension bike, clipless pedals, yada, yada, you got it more dialed in for all around. It's, it'll work a little bit better in many places, though maybe never quite as good as something purpose built for that one Goldilocks spot. Before we dive into the next chapter of the Ultimate Internet Bike, let's do a few wheelies. Oh, that's a cliff. Wow, it's a steep hillside to my left. That down there, you don't want to fall down. Why so many wheelies? Well, as a wise man once said, you only have one trick, be sure to do it everywhere. But in all seriousness, if you haven't wheelied a hardtail with a short back end and a nice long front end, well, you're in for a treat. These things wheelie really nicely. To me, the stylus would be the ultimate bike to learn how to wheelie with. It is definitely a little spooky. Yeah. That was a fun one. Before we can call it a wrap with the Ultimate Internet Bike, let's take it to a few other places that we might commonly ride a bicycle. This is a hardtail. And what do you do with a hardtail? You hit jumps. This thing's fun. It's definitely not a dirt jumper though. I just cranked down the preload to maximum on the spring. And then I got the damper not quite locked out, but I'll be danged if it's not quarters width away from locked out. It's super turned up. That made it help, but still. Still a cross country bike, not a dirt jumper. Oh. Over clear. Yeah. Try that again. Oh, too far again. Well, a hardtail's a hardtail, right? No, it doesn't quite work like that. So a true dirt jumper has an extremely different feel on the jumps. Perhaps it's from the shorter front end, perhaps it's from the shorter back end. Either way, while the Kermag's a great bike for riding trails, this is not its okay. home turf. What do you think? It's a steering. It ain't better. It's goofy. It's definitely weird at first. And the wheels are so misbalanced for stuff like this. Yeah. I firmed up the fork some. Even more? Yeah. I'm worried it's going to explode. I'm not all the way. Just close. Now, has the internet led us astray? I don't know. At this point, however, I'm not really enjoying the mullet setup. On the jumps, the mismatched wheel size doesn't feel balanced to me. Not as bad as your sandals. It takes so much input. Yeah. It's like... It's not an easy bike to okay, jump. one more. I want to thank Logan for bringing us three important safety tips. One, don't take your hands off the handlebars. Two, don't dirt jump in sandals. And three, never say one last time. In the name of science, I tried the bike out on the pump track. And you know what? It does better on the pump track than on the jumps, but still, for me, it's a very misbalanced feel with that huge front wheel and that really small back wheel and the extremely short chain stick. Good bike, but in my opinion, not the right setup. Now, since those jumps were brand new and I haven't done them before, we came over to an older spot in town just to quadruple check that this thing doesn't jump like a dirt jumper does. Well, it can make it through, but it's definitely not a dirt jumper. The next step in testing the ultimate internet bike hypothesis is to take it to yet another unique riding destination. The Chromeg handles really well on these rocky, tight, technical, and even steep environments. And a big part of that, I think, is because the speeds are generally a little bit lower. Yeah, a fast time down this might mean you hit 15 miles an hour instead of 12. But when things really open up to be more bike parky and speeds get up around 20, 25 miles an hour, well, at that point, the hardtail does kind of rear its hard little head. 
At these higher speeds, a full suspension bike makes a lot of sense. Not only do all the little vibrations add up, but when you have an impact, you really start to feel it. The theory behind the mullet is that that big 29 inch wheel would then soak up a lot of the small bumps and that the coil fork would be more plush than the air fork. But my real life experiences were that the bigger tires, the cush core, and the even longer travel did a better job of doing exactly that. Much as the camel is a horse designed by a committee, a lot of these ultimate internet ideas make sense one at a time and individually, but applying them to a bike like the stylus didn't exactly work out to the strengths of this fine bicycle. Everyone can laugh at my terrible hardtail skills. A great example of where I really enjoy the Chromeg is Sedona. The trails are tight and technical, but they're not high speed. These more man-made kind of bike parky trails that are high speed aren't really playing to the strengths of this cool little bicycle. Ultimate is very much in the eye of the beholder. Despite the online hype around this type of setup, I don't think it is indeed the ultimate configuration for this bike. Oh, that sucked. As I mentioned in the intro of this video, I've got a full bike check pasted into the YouTube description below with a bunch of links that'll take you over to Jensen USA. Anything you purchase from Jensen will directly help support my channel, so thanks in advance. I also want to say the Chromag frame is top notch uh -huh. and I can't recommend it enough as long as you're setting it up the right way and using it for the right kind of riding. Oh. All right guys, time to make some dinner, go to bed. Everyone say thanks to Logan for filming. And then before we go, I got to hang on for one quick second because we all got to go down and hit the red subscribe button. Let's all go hit the red subscribe button because I know a bunch of you haven't yet. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. I'll see you guys in the comments below and in the next video. Peace.